Hey, what is up everybody? My name is Radhi and you're watching my channel, Radhi the Brand. Today we're going to design this gym website using Adobe Experience Design. All the assets will be linked in the description below. Enjoy the process and if you have any questions, please comment below, like this video and consider subscribing. Now let's jump to the computer, open Adobe XD and get started. Hey, welcome everybody and let's get started. As you can see in front of me, we have a couple of gym images and I'm going to use those images for project today. All of those images come from unsplash.com and they are available to download for free. Of course, it's nice to credit the authors of the images and that's why every single image will be linked in the description below and the article that I'm going to create. Now let's jump in Adobe XD and create our project. Today we're going to do things a little bit different than usual. We're going to start with mobile first and then work our way up to tablet and desktop. So to get started, let's select the iPhone 12 Pro Max and this should create a blank canvas for us. The first thing that I usually do is rename the canvas name. So this is going to be our landing page or homepage. So I can double click on the title here and just put something like home. The next very important thing would be to actually save this document and there are two ways of doing this. We can either save it locally on our computer or we can save it in the cloud and today I'm gonna go with file save as a local document just because I'll probably upload this later for people to download as well. Let's call this gym-ui and save the document. Okay, we're now good to begin designing our project. To make things easy with the alignment, I usually set a grid for my layout. And to do this, you can double click on the canvas. And then here on the right side, we have the grid option. So if we select this, you will see the grid appearing and you can change the color from here if you wish. And of course you can change the gutter width, the column width and the margins from the left and the right. Now this grid is absolutely fine, but the only thing that I don't like is the all this available space on the right side and the left side. And I want to be able to use a little bit more of this space. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select on this number here, which is the margins, and I'm going to hold shift and the down arrow, I'm just going to tap a few times until I'm happy with the grid. I'm thinking of going with 19. So we have four columns, gutter width is set to 10, column width is set to 90, and the left and right margins are set to 19. Now let's press anywhere outside this uh, canvas to unselect it and we can start looking at some of the branding. Now, of course, you're going to need a logo for this project. I already have one and actually I'm going to be using my personal logo that you see in this channel. So I'm going to leave this for now. But the next important thing that we need to figure out is the uh, topography that we want to use. I mean, you can always change the topography later, but I think it's nice to have a setup at the start because it's just going to make things a little bit easier. So to set up the topography, you can either press T on your keyboard or press uh, the text button here and you can start typing anywhere, even outside the canvas. So what I want to do is I want to set two different font, uh, two different styles. So one will be for the headings. I'm going to type headings and the other one will be for things such as the paragraphs like body text, um, buttons and so on. So maybe we can do body text. Now for the headings, I'm going to go with poppins. Poppins is a free Google font that you can download and use freely. And then I'm going to set the font size to be somewhere around 42 pixels, something big and bold. So let's change the weight of the font to be bold, just like so. And actually that's already looking good. The next thing that I'll probably do is change the text color to be white. And this is only because our layout will be quite dark. So white will contrast quite well. And I'm going to do the same with the body text. So I'm going to go with poppins. And I'm going to go with font size of 16, regular, and then white. 
Now, one thing that I wanted to mention is that you might want to experiment with different uh, with different topography for the headings and the body text just to make your layout look a little bit more interesting. But I'm going to just keep it simple today with pop-ins. And the reason for this is because I'm actually going to make the heading styles a little bit more interesting with uh, border and shadows and so on. So I think that at the end of the day, it's going to work out quite well. But definitely try to mess around with the topography just to make your layout a little bit more interesting. Saying this, if we grab both of those two elements, and of course you can create heading one, heading two, heading four. In fact, let's create heading two super quickly. And let's set this to 26 and let's do heading one, heading two, and we have the body text. And as I said, you can create heading one, two, three, four, and so on. And now once, once you're happy with this, select all of them together, go to your library here, and then and just click on the character styles plus symbol here. And this will add all of the symbols in here, which means that we can change them at any time and they will update everywhere on our layout. And also, we can reuse them super quickly. Save this and let's go back to our canvas. And by the way, I am holding the space button and the left mouse button to navigate around if you're not familiar. And I'm zooming out with control and minus, or if you're on Mac, command and minus and control and plus to zoom in, of course. So control and minus to zoom out, control and plus to zoom in. And if you're Mac, you just replace control with command. Let's start from top to bottom and we'll work our way in. And the first thing that I want to do is make sure that the canvas background color is set to black. So if I double click on the canvas, I can go here at the fill, click on the fill and then drag the color down here to the darkest of black, which is uh, six zeros. Now let's unselect this and let's zoom out a little bit. And what I can do actually is if I double click on the canvas, we can also expand this because I definitely know that this layout is going to be a little bit longer. So I'm just gonna expand it a little bit. It doesn't have to be too much. We can always adjust it later on. And one thing that I want you to notice here is if I double click on the canvas, you will see this blue line here. And this blue line basically shows that this is kind of like the full screen of your phone and everything outside this blue line is where the scroll starts. So if I was to put a white square here and if I was to uh, preview this, you will see that this is the full screen and then everything outside this uh, square here that I just put is below. Let me remove this and let's start from the top and we'll work our way down. Um, Let's start with dragging our logo in here. And as I said earlier, I've already prepared my logo just so we save a little bit of time. This is the logo that I use for the channel and I just put a little bit of text. So what I'm gonna do is place the logo somewhere around here and we can always come back and adjust it. But my logo is a little bit special uh, because the hat sometimes throws it off. I don't know whether to just put it slightly like this. Uh, I'm not so sure. Maybe I can change it a little bit later on. We'll have a look. And then for the navigation, I just want to make this super simple and design a burger menu. And to do this, if you zoom in a little bit more, we can use the line tool inside from here, from the left, or you can just press L on your keyboard if you want to speed up the process. And all you have to do is just drag a new line like so. I want this line to be around 16 pixels. The border color can be set to white. And I can actually now replicate this by doing Alt, Shift and dragging this line down. Maybe with like five uh, pixels in between. And I can do the same thing for this line, Alt, Shift, down and uh, just drag down with five pixels until you see this purple line, which means that everything is nicely aligned. So if I was to select every single line now, like so, I can do Control and G to group everything, or you can do right click and group if you wish. On Mac, of course, is Command and G. And now I can position this here on the right side. Of course, I want this burger menu to be actually aligned with the uh, logo here. So what I'm going to do is make sure that everything is aligned like so, and then just drag to the right side. Now, some of you might drag this right to the right side here, uh, which 
might look fine, uh, which probably looks the correct way of doing things. But one thing that you might want to uh, think about is that if you're familiar with CSS and one thing that you might want to consider is that this button will need to be pressed. And at the moment it's like fairly small. So what I would do is maybe like give it a little bit of space around so the button is easier to press, which means that I would have to move this a little bit to the side like so. So we have this kind of like an invisible square, let's say I'll put it just underneath like so. And that would, when we develop the website, that would make the button so much easier to press. Of course, I'm going to remove this from here. It does look nice for some reason, but I'm going to remove it anyways. So this is the reason that I didn't uh, align this to the right side and the logo I aligned. Uh, I offset a little bit just because of the cap, but I'm not so sure at the moment. Maybe we can mess around with it uh, a little bit. Yeah, I think this is a little bit better. So this is looking good. Both of them are center aligned. And if you grab both of the elements, select them, you can always group them. So if you ever need to move them up or down, so Ctrl and G, you can just freely move them around, which makes things so much easier. And you can also make components from them as well, if you wish, but I'm going to leave this for now. Now, the next thing I would love to do is to add the first image just so we can get the feel of this layout. So the first image uh, that I'm going to grab is uh, this really cool photo from unsplash.com. But before we actually drag this image in, it might be just easier to jump to Adobe XD and create a container that will contain that photo. It will act more of a mask as a mask. It's just easier. We can, uh, we could have dragged the image in, but to create a container, I'm going to use the rectangle tool here or R on your keyboard and then you just drag. Um, the container doesn't really matter how big it is at the moment. So if I do a full width and full height, let's remove the border. As a default, all the containers have this gray border, which sometimes is nice and sometimes is very annoying. And let's now go back to the image and drag this image and just like drag the image on top of the container. And as you can see, this container changes color, which means that uh, it's gonna act as a mask when we drop the image. So, so this is looking pretty cool, but I definitely want to make the image maybe, I don't know, a little bit smaller. Let's have a look. And we actually, as we're changing the image aspect ratio, we're actually starting to see a little bit more of the image, which I really like. And one thing that I'm noticing is that the woman here is not uh, exactly in the middle. So what I could do is if I double click on this shape here, which acts as a mask, uh, we can position the image the way we actually want. So I'm going to move this image slightly to the right like so. And you can use your uh, arrow keys as well to be super precise if you wish to. And once you're happy with this, you can just uh, click anywhere outside the canvas. And here we go. We have the image and it's looking pretty awesome. Now this image is on top of our uh, navigation. So what we could do is we can either click on the image and do control and left bracket to send this to the back, or you can do right click and then send backwards. So this is the, basically the, uh, shortcut. If we do this, you will see that the logo is appearing and the navigation it's here at the top, which is pretty good. But one issue that uh, we'll probably have is the contrast at the moment is not uh, really bad, but uh, let me show you if I select the canvas, I remove the grid for a sec. You will see that, I mean, the logo is kind of uh, lost in here, especially on the white. So it's definitely going to be beneficial to add some sort of uh, darker overlay in here to make things uh, pop out a little bit more. To make that happen, let's use the rectangle tool again from here. And let's just drag another rectangle and make it as big as the image here. So let's like so, remove the border, make the field to be black. And now we can actually do control and left bracket to move the background down one bit, uh, just so we have the logo and the navigation on top. And then we can play with the opacity. So maybe even 
40% is already good to me. This will definitely work and I can keep it as it is, but I want to make this a little bit more interesting. And what I'm thinking of is if you've seen the layout on the intro, you will see that everything was kind of like flowing in and out with like a dark gradient. So that's what I'm thinking of doing. And to do this, we can click on the rectangle here and instead of fill, we can click on the fill here. And instead of solid color, we can use the linear gradient. As you can see, the gradient has now popped up and we just need to change the top to be fully transparent by dragging this down, as you can see. And then the bottom bit, we can change to black like so. And maybe, maybe we can move this a little bit like so. But the only thing is that we have a lot of opacity now. So what I'm going to do is let's lift the opacity back up. And that's probably too much. Uh, so we definitely have to mess around with this. I, I want the gradient to be quite soft. I don't want it to be too solid, if that makes sense. I'm going to do, going to click on this color here and just make it a little bit darker at the top as well. And we just have to mess around, I guess, until we like the end result. And I think this is actually okay. Now, sometimes you might get this really weird line. I'm not getting it now as we zoomed in, but okay. Now we're getting it, but don't worry about this. Hopefully if we preview this, we wouldn't get the line. As you can see, I think it's just the way the pixels are laid down, which is absolutely fine. Let me close this. And now let's do some of the text. Now, what we can do is let's drag uh, the heading and we can actually rename the characters in here. So I'm going to double click on this and do maybe like heading one. And then this could be heading two. And this could be body text. Like so. Now what we can do is copy some of the text from here or we can create a new one. So let's do T for text on your keyboard and start typing. I've already prepared a little bit of content to speed up the process. And let's start typing the heading. So the heading I want will be make this here your hair like so with a dot and I want to center align this but before we actually mess up with the styles I want to choose the heading one from here so if I was to select this box with the text and choose heading one you will see that the styles change. And one thing that I didn't do uh, originally is to change the line spacing from here. So what I'm going to do is change this to somewhere around 41. Actually, that doesn't look good at all. Maybe, I don't know. That looks a little bit better to me and I'm going to keep this. And of course I could have uh, updated the original heading from here. And of course I'll probably, it's probably best to update the character styles from here. So I can do right click edit and I can do 40, uh, 54, sorry for the line height and then unclick this. So I think that we should be good now. Now to make this heading a little bit more interesting, there are a couple of things I can do. Uh, first of all, we could add a little bit of drop shadow by selecting the heading and clicking on shadow. I don't know uh, if you can see, I mean, it's kind of hard to see, but uh, we can definitely mess around with the shadow here. Um, yeah, you can see a little bit better now. Um, kind of hard to see, to be honest. Uh, we don't want it to be too, uh, I don't want the shadow to be too harsh, but something like this might do the job. Let's have a look outside. Yeah, this is like, this is like a fairly soft shadow and I think that it looks okay. And now what we want to do is center line this. As you can see, when I move it, we get this snapping line here, snapping grid thing. So I'm going to put this in the middle like so, leave it. And to make this a little bit more interesting, I'm going to duplicate this. And what I want to do is I want to change uh, the top text to be an outline text. So what I'm going to have to do is, I think to make it easier, I'm going to remove this bottom bit from here and then select this text, go to fill. Actually, we want to remove the fill and then we want to add a little bit of a border. Uh, for the border, of course, I'm going to keep it white just so it stands out a little bit. And we can definitely experiment with border one or border two, whatever you think is best. But I think because of the font size, the border one looks the best to me. Um, 
And then we can definitely uh, copy this text from the top and just remove the top bit as well. And now what I want to do, it's a little bit awkward, but I just want to match the spacing. So I'm going to put this on top and this on top here. And this is it. So we've matched the spacing between those two text boxes and I'm going to move them up like so and do Control and G to group them. And I can now remove this as we will need it. Now, if I grab this, we can center line it like so somewhere around here and we can continue. Now for the next bit, I'm just thinking of adding a little bit of text and we've already created the body text. So that should be super simple. But before we paste the text, what I want to do is I for double click click on the artboard and click on the grid. You will see uh, what I want to do is actually center align this text. Now the whole layout will be center aligned. I mean, center aligned is not, uh, center aligning the text is probably not best for like reading too much text, but uh, because we're going to have only a little bit of text, then I think that we should be okay. So what I'm going to do is let's do control, uh, sorry, let's put uh, some text by pressing T on your keyboard or text from here and just drag this time. So we're dragging a box now, which, which means that the text will be, uh, will always start from here and end here and obviously go in a separate line if it has to. So I'm going to copy a little bit of text and paste it like so and this is still using the heading so what i'm gonna have to do is unclick select the text and then click on the body text which is the 16 pt um that doesn't look correct to me oh okay that doesn't look correct to me and this is because the the text still still looks bold and this is because we actually have the uh, border selected because we actually because we copied this probably uh, but anyways let's remove the border and this should normalize the text for us so this is the way i want it and i'm actually thinking that this is not so bad i mean we could uh if you want to get this triangle thing we could do we could shrink the text a little bit and position it like so uh but I wouldn't worry too much about that. So this is looking fairly decent uh, uh, to me at the moment. The next thing that I would like to do is create a button. And for the button, let's use the rectangle and let's maybe, I wonder whether to start the button from here. That might be too big. Maybe we just make this, the button a slightly smaller, maybe like 210 and 40 pixels of height. And then we can center align this in here. And for the button, I'm going to be using the ghost button effect. So which means that we remove the fill and then we click on the border and then we select the border to be white. Now this doesn't, um, I don't know, it doesn't look too bad, but we could definitely ex uh, experiment with the border size by going up. This looks, mm, I don't know, hard for me to say at the moment. Let's go for two just so it stands out a little bit more. Let me test it with one. I don't know, I'm starting to, uh, I'm starting to like the one now. So let's go with one pixel border, but of course uh, we can always change our mind later on. And now what I'm going to do is copy some of this paragraph text in here and paste it on top. So Control C, Control V to copy and paste. And I'm going to position this inside the button and just shrink it so the text fits inside. And the text for this one will be uh, find out more like so. And let's deselect make sure that everything is center aligned like so. And I think that this could be a good button. The other thing that you could do is you could have another rectangle. Let's say, let's say this needs to be 40 and we could use this blur option here. So if I remove everything and do blur, you'll see that we're getting, actually, if I remove the grid for a sec, you'll see that we're getting this blur effect anywhere we go. And I think that's pretty cool. It's quite nice. So we could potentially uh, put this at the bottom if you wish and that would make it a little bit more interesting in my opinion and this could be our button so i mean i wonder whether to put this as 14 pixels like so i don't know i kind of like this so let's have a look find out more yeah i'm between 16 and 14 pixels i think this is pretty cool um so let's keep it as it is now and let's group this button so if i select all of the elements it's a little bit harder now because we have so many elements at the bottom but select this this and 
yeah, I've selected everything. It's a little bit hard, but if you select everything, we can go here to components and just create a new component. So as I said earlier, what that means is that if we drag a new component out and if we change your mind at some point, let's say maybe I actually decided that the uh, type needs to be a little bit bigger. We can edit main uh, component and I can change this to, let's say, 16 pixels, move it a little bit to the top. And as you can see, this reflects all the other buttons uh, that will be on the page, which is super useful. Uh, that happens to me all the time. Sometimes I change my mind in the last second. I'm like, oh, this text is too big. This text is too small. And it would be a pain to go back and change absolutely, absolutely everything. But let's go back because I'm okay with the size of this now. And yeah, let's remove this one as we will need it. Now, there are a few decisions that we need to make in here. As you can see, this is the full screen of the phone. Now, the, the decision that we need to make in here is that do we want this to take like the full screen or do we want to take or do you just want to take a part of the screen? I mean, maybe I'm thinking of actually making this a little bit bigger. So like, like so. And I think this is kind of like a decent size now. And then we can start the next section from here. So people will see that there is a lot more to uh, scroll uh, and people will start seeing some of the other content in here. I think that this will be okay. Uh, the next thing that we could do is if we select the button, select the text and the title, we can definitely group this just in case we want to mess around with the position later on. And one thing that I want to do is maybe move this to the top a little bit. I don't know. Maybe this needs to be moved a little bit up and this needs to be moved like so. Uh, that looks a little bit more balanced. Okay. And by the way, if this blur is a little bit too much for you, you could click on it and then adjust the amount of the blur. Or you could have it just ever so slightly and that will work super nice as well. For the next bit, we're going to have three sections or three big buttons. Uh, there will be expert coaching, nutrition and support. So first of all, what I'm thinking of doing is let's create a new rectangle. Make sure that this rectangle, if you double click on the uh, artboard and select the grid so let's make sure that this that this rectangle starts from the left here and ends on the right side here and we just need to choose somewhere around i don't know 320 sounds good i think uh, we can always change it and this will be our first section so what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to move this to the left here and i'm going to start adding some content so let's get one of the images so let's say this one here let's grab it and check this image on top uh, she looks pretty awesome and the only thing that i don't like about this is that we're uh, missing a lot of the image so what i'm going to do is double click and just move the uh, image to the top like so and we can always change the aspect ratio if you want to see more but i think this is a little bit better now and of course when we created the rectangle this created the border so if we click on it let's move the border and now we can start by adding a little bit of text so text tool and then we can start the text from the left side to the right side like so and the first text will be expert coaching like so. This text is center line, center line. That's why it's in the middle. And I'm going to select the heading two that we created earlier in this tutorial, like so. And I think this is looking good, but we're getting the same problem as before. The uh, Depending on the image that we have at the bottom, the contrast between the image and the text might not be good enough. So we could definitely put an overlay. And just before I do that, I just want to show you another thing. If we click on this text, and if we go to plugins, I have this plugin called, uh, which one is it? Stark. So if you click on Stark, this will actually uh, tell you if your contrast is good or not. So if I click check contrast, okay, uh, doesn't seem to be working. I wonder what I need to select the image as well. Let's have a look. I'll select the image as well now. Check contrast. Oops, no fills. Okay. Oh, unfortunately, it doesn't do it in images, but it definitely does it on. Uh, if I was to create a rectangle below it, and let's say this rectangle was I don't know, something brighter, like so. Now, if I do check contrast, you will see that the contrast ratio doesn't pass. Uh, it's not good. Uh, but if I change this to 
a darker color, let's say black, black and white contrast quite well. So check contrast, and as you can see, it's all good. This is just a nice little plugin that you can have a look at. But anyways, what I'm gonna do is create a rectangle here. So R on your keyboard, and then drag a new rectangle to fill the full box. And then let's remove the border, and then let's put the fill to be black. Now, what we have to do is move this uh, backwards. So we can either do control and a left bracket, or we can do a right click and uh, send backwards and then the text will appear. Now let's change the opacity a little bit. Maybe this could be around 40 and that already looks good to me. So around 40% of opacity on this black color uh, seems to be popping out the text, which I'm happy with. So this will be all kind of like or component that we're going to reuse for the other sections as well. So what I could potentially do is I can grab this and create a new component in here. And uh, this might be actually fairly useful as for when we're creating the tablet mode and the desktop mode. Now let's uh, copy this and paste it one more time here. Actually, we need it three times and the reason for, oops, this is now inside the canvas. So let's get out of the canvas. And the reason that I'm duplicating it is because I want to have three sections. The first one is expert coaching. The second one is nutrition. And the last one is support. Okay, this is pretty good. Um, of course, uh, I would want to update the images. So what I'm gonna have to do is double click on this and remove the top layer, which is the black layer with the 40% of opacity. And I'm gonna have to drag another image. So I'm gonna drag this person here and just drop it like so. And that's already looking good to me. I mean, I could potentially double click on it and just make it, make the person slightly bigger. I think that would look better. And then we can move this box back. Now let's do the same for the last one. So double click on the box, move this. I'm holding shift by the way to move it straight. That's why it's not going anywhere. And now let's get the other image, which will be the those people here. So let's drag that in. And I think maybe let's zoom in a little bit. I think this will do. And let's move this around. Let's double click on the box and move it at the top like so. Okay, I'm happy with this. Um, the only thing that we might struggle now is to fit all of them here. And what I'm thinking of is grabbing just two of the boxes. So in fact, let's leave them in here. I'm going to copy two of those boxes, paste them and just move them inside here, inside the canvas. And let's maybe align them around here. like so. And one thing that I wanted to make sure is that the space in between those two cards is equal to the space of my grid. So I'm going to drag this one to the right side, which is 10 pixels exactly. And that's pretty cool. And the reason I'm going to, I'm actually going to leave it like this just because this could be, uh, I'm thinking of this as a slider. So if we preview this, you will see that uh, when, you sc when you start scrolling down, you see that there is more content on the right side. Uh, this could be animated automatically to scroll uh, and so on, but, but that's looking cool. One more thing that I would love to do is to kind of create a cool tilt effect. So like if you were to swipe with your finger on the card, maybe if we click on this card here, we can use this new transform tool, 3D transform or yeah, it's control and T on your keyboard. So if I press on this, you will see that we're getting this really cool uh, 3D box in here. It's kind of hard to see, I guess. Let me zoom in. And then if you hover over with your mouse, you will see that you're able to rotate the card the way you want. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to rotate the card. Like Let's tilt it a little bit like so. I'm actually happy with this, but let's fake this a little bit. I'm going to move this to the left like so. So look at this. It's a pretty cool effect. Uh, if we play it, uh, yeah, it's looking pretty cool. 
Of course, you can actually animate this in Adobe XD, but I'm not going to be doing uh, the animations in Adobe XD. So let's close this. Okay, this section is now done and we can move on to the next one. And the next one will have a big image in the middle and it will just say, get started today, why wait? So first of all, let's do R on the keyboard and drag a new shape, maybe somewhere around six would do and let's remove the 3d box actually and remove the border and let's drag a new image for this section so this one will be uh, this one here that i'm going to be using this image here so let's drag this image into adobe xd and this is looking super cool. I'm going to double click on the canvas and remove the grid super quickly just so we can see a little bit better. And it's and it would be good to have a little bit of space between the cards, I guess, like so. Excuse me. And now we have to do the usual. Now we already have some of the components ready, such as the button and the heading. But before we do that, I was thinking let's do our overlay because we already know that the contrast is not going to be good enough for white text on top. So let's do another rectangle on top uh, on your keyboard. Start dragging a box and this could be uh, remove the border. We can set the field to black. Opacity, we can set to actually opacity we can set to maybe around 60 and one thing that i want to do is actually want to make this image slightly more interesting so what we could do um i think the red inside this image would actually work quite well with this so what i could do is instead of fill we can change this to a linear gradient and what i can do is for the top we can leave it as black like it is and for the bottom i'm thinking of like a very dark red color just to make this uh, image look a little bit better like make it a little bit more interesting and of course you could have taken this into photoshop and photoshop it the way you like but that's a very easy way of uh making it cool i think the next thing that i want to do is create two gradients one on top and one on the bottom so this image like fades in and fades out so let's create a box at the bottom here. Uh, I don't know how big this will need to be. Maybe a lot bigger than this. Let's put it as 100. Let's put it as 100, make this, remove the border. Let's change the fill to be linear gradient. And this needs to, let's have a look. This needs to start with black at the bottom. And then at the top, we can leave it can I leave it as white and then just change the opacity? Probably not because we're getting this gray effect, which I really don't like. So instead of leaving this as white, I'm going to leave this. I'm going to change this, sorry, to black. And as you can see, this now fades in uh, really nicely. And yeah, I like this much better. And you can always mess around with the fade. So if you want it faster, if you want it less, in fact, I kind of like this uh, fade now. So what I'm going to do is click on this, copy it, Control C, Control V to paste it. And I'm going to go here on the corner of the box and just rotate it like so. And if you hold shift, this will rotate it easier for you. It will snap as when you need to. So 180 degrees. And now we can move this box at the top. Oops. And move it at the top like so. And we should be good to go. So we now have the fade at the top and at the bottom. I really like this. And now let's add some of the text. So for the text, let's use the text tool T on your keyboard. Uh, we can start dragging the text from the left column to the right, which I can't see at the moment, but I'm going to fix this in a second. So if you zoom in, oops, okay, let me double click on this, put the grid on, add some text drag it from the left to the right and let's just type something like uh, get started today and then we have white white kind of like a marketing material here so people can sign up uh, this needs to be heading to so that's easy peasy here we can definitely drag a bu button and actually i should have renamed this if i do put click on this we can say uh, ghost button maybe and just drag the button out here a uh, center line a like so and maybe we can change this to sign up like so and that's looking pretty cool let me remove the grid super quickly just so we can see a little bit better 
and also I want to duplicate the effect that we had here at the top so that would be uh, fairly easy to do so let's copy this paste this somewhere and oops I zoomed in too much and I'm gonna remove the top bit if you remember we can do the remove the fill at the border one pixel white is absolutely fine to me and then we can copy this here paste it again uh, then remove the text like so no that's absolutely fine so if i place this at the top that works if i place this here that works as well so i can select both of them Control g to group move them a little bit actually if i send them on put one time back that if i send them down a little bit i can select the text here and move it move this back up and that's it that's pretty cool so if I was to select this text and select the button, Ctrl and G to group it, and maybe I can center align this in the section. And if you feel that this section is far too big on your mobile phone, then you can just select everything and shrink it down. Um, the best way to do this is to, of course, preview it. But even so, oops. Even so, sometimes when you preview it on here on the desktop, uh, you can't really get the feel of how the website is going to look like. And so I would suggest you downloading the Adobe XD application on your phone, saving this to the cloud, and you can actually preview this on your phone just so you can see how the, the website looks like. Unfortunately, I selected iPhone Pro, uh, so that probably won't fit exactly on my phone, but yeah maybe you should just change the what is it called the canvas to the size of your phone and that would fit quite well i believe none of these uh my phone i think i'm still rocking a very old phone that's why anyways let's have a look at the next section this one was actually fairly quick and easy to do make sure that you save by doing Control and c and now for the next section i'm actually thinking of maybe could i copy some of this text and paste it so let's copy and paste some of this text, center align it, and then we can do your, your training options. I wonder if I can select this text and just change the border. It doesn't allow me, unfortunately. So I'm gonna have to, yeah, I'm gonna have to write this text again. So what I'm gonna have to do is combine them. Okay, let me show you. So let me ungroup this first of all. Let's change this to options. Like so, I'm going to have to remove the box, so auto width, like so, and I can just position options at the top here. And if it doesn't get in a way, we could leave the one, now let's remove it. But if we remove it now, this text is center aligned, which is a little bit annoying. So let me add a rectangle between them, just so I know the spacing. And what I'm going to do now is if I remove the options from below, yeah, because it's center line, obviously the text goes center. And let me remove the this to auto it and go to the left. And that should be it. I think, I think it was around there. I don't know. It looks a little bit too much now. Should be around there. Okay. Is there too much space? Maybe. Yeah, I think this looks a little bit better. So if I select both of them and Control and G, now I can center align them in the middle of our canvas and we should be good and we should be good to go. So for the next bit, we need to add a little bit of text. Let's add the grid again and then do Control, sorry, do T on your keyboard to add some text. And I'm going to copy and paste some of the text. I don't know what's happened to this text. Let's put body text and that's already looking good i'm gonna mess around with the spacing a little bit like so until you're happy and i think that should work well okay let's do the training options now and to save a little bit of time what we can do is use the categories from here that we created earlier so i'm gonna grab one of the categories copy and paste i'm going to paste this around here so what i want to achieve here is uh potentially i want to create three of them boxes for three different options and let's do that so what i'm going to do is right click and then ungroup component uh just so we have a nice clean component here and what i'm going to do is move the heading a little bit at the top and just 
copy and paste some of the text that I've already prepared. So I'm going to do small group, uh, small group PT, uh, and I'm going to do small group PT. Let's add a little bit of text underneath here. And let me copy and paste the text. This is a little bit too big, of course. So we're going to use the body text and maybe just center line this like so. I think this is looking good. Uh, one thing that would probably change is the, the opacity here on this layer that we had. So that would be I don't know, something like 60 would be a little bit better, I think. Just better contrast. So I think that's looking good. And one thing that uh, you could potentially do is you could either uh, use the repeat grid. So if I do repeat grid, we can do uh, extend this three times like so. And then let's make sure that this is 10 pixels in between. And yeah, that's looking good. And if I want to replace the images and the text, I actually can I can actually do that without affecting uh, anything else. If I copy the first one, so classes, let's do that. Then one to one. Let's copy some of the text and that's looking good. One thing I would probably change is the images. So what we can do because we are in a repeat grid, we can remove this upper layer. And as you can see, everything else follows. So if I go back, I can actually select the three images that I want and then just drag them in here and we're done. Uh, this might not be the right way that I want them. I actually want this one at the top. Uh, so I could, um, replace this one here and just replace the other one as well. Let's remove the overlay on top just so they're easy to read and we are good. Now because this is a group it's a little bit tricky to do the hover effect but let me show you what you could do super quickly. Uh, so I could potentially create this as a component and then I could create a new state. So maybe on hover, I mean, we don't have hover mobile, we have a tap, but if you tap on this, maybe we want to do something. So for example, what I can do is I can change this to be around 40 and I can also maybe click on the inside image and just zoom in like so. Let's move this back like so. And if I was to go back to the full state, you'll see the difference. And also, if I was to preview this, you will see that we're getting this uh, effect. And I don't think the effect is working on, actually it is working on the other ones, but because I made a whole component, now it's affecting uh, the other two cards. But that's just something quickly that you can do if you wish to. But uh, I'm going to remove the hover, oops. I'm actually going to remove this hover state for now. Uh, you could potentially, I guess you could potentially have them individually and so on, uh, but that's that's all cool. I'm pretty much done with this section. The next section will be very similar to the section above here. So what I'm going to do is grab everything from here, copy, uh, go down and paste, and I think that would work quite well. So I'm going to have to remove the overlay and replace the image. So at least we drag a new image. Let's just paste in here and that's looking cool. But the red background doesn't really suit this image in my opinion. So what I'm going to do is maybe let's just do a solid black color. I think that's already much better uh, in my opinion. It flows a little bit better. Uh, obviously, don't worry about those lines. They won't be seen. And yeah, I think... Let me just quickly change this uh, title. So this will say quickly. Oh, uh, okay. This is going to be tricky. I think it was around here. Okay. I could have measured this and pasted it, but uh, oops, I want to paste the other text as well. Uh, I guess I could measure it now and just, uh, so if I do the space in between them like so with a rectangle, I can, yeah, that's that's pretty spot on actually. So this is another section done super quickly. And now we pretty much have one last section left and that is the footer. So for the footer, we can have a couple of things. So first of all, let's write a little bit of text in here. So I'm going to say find us. Let's make this a little bit smaller actually, maybe even like 
18. I could keep it bold, I guess. Have the fill as white, I think that would do. Make sure that this is aligned to the grid around here. And what I'm thinking is, I'm thinking of adding an icon. Actually, yeah. So I'm gonna have a few sections. So for example, find this and then after this, this section will be expand. And then after this, we're gonna get we're gonna have get assistance. We can have company. Then we can have keep in touch. And so on. And I want to change the line height in here. So I want to change the uh, line height between them to be around 41 or something like that just so we have a little bit more space. And of course, this can be left aligned. Uh, that can be left aligned as well. And what I'm gonna do is, so we have um, these three sections and I'm gonna go and find an icon. So for the icons, let's use icons for design and do plus. Let's have a look at this one. Uh, yeah, this one will work. So let's drag it to the bottom like so white and of course let's make it a little bit smaller uh, like so and so the what i'm doing here is basically uh, i'm thinking of these as different sections that are mobile i want to save as much space as i can and just display the that, the really really important information like how to find this or like keep in touch and then for the rest uh, we can have an expander like a like a tab that expands so if you press on get assistance this will go to minus and you'll see all the information for guest assistance, if this makes sense. And again, I'm going to leave a little bit of space around this button, just so this button is a little bit easier to press. So maybe like so, and I'm going to copy this a few times. Of course, this needs to be uh, kind of like centered. And you know what? Keep in touch could be another one. Keep in touch can be opened or whatever. We'll have a look. So for the first section, maybe we just have an address. So I'm going to copy this and paste, change this to the body text, I think. And then let's just copy a little bit of text. So I'm going to have an address of 43 Moscow Pi London. And then we can have, uh, let's have a look. We can have Messenger and Twitter. So let's go back to the icons and do Messenger. No, uh, okay, no messenger icon. And we can use the other plugin, which is the auto icon and start auto icon. We can do, I don't know, bootstrap. Let's have a look. No messenger icon in here as well. Feta icons, surely they'll have messenger. Okay, Feta icons have messenger. And I also want maybe like Twitter. Okay, finally, uh, we have both of them. I'm gonna make them white. Put them around here and maybe we can just do, they could be like that. I mean, that might be hard to press. It might be a little bit too. I'm going to copy this text here and paste and just thinking about it. And just thinking about it, I was thinking of making it like here, but it might be actually hard to press the messenger and the Twitter icon. So what I'm going to do, what the hell is happening? Okay, so what I'm gonna do is move this right here and I give it a little bit more space. And I'm gonna do the same for Twitter. I'm gonna zoom in, make this a little smaller and just do Twitter, just so they're easier to press. Like so, maybe we can move them, oops. Maybe we can move them, group them first of all. That would be a good one. And then move them a little bit to the top. We could also make the location clickable and so on, but let me, let me click on this, remove the space. Okay. I think that would actually work. So let's keep it simple. And for get in touch, I'm going to add a little bit more text, so copy and paste. And it would be nice to have the same space in between the headings. So I didn't really put too much time into this one. Let's do that. A rectangle. To measure things keep in touch this could go up a little bit like so and what i'm going to do is make sure that this goes all the way across and it goes down and then copy this text that i have here and paste it let's create a very simple input with the rectangle tool on your keyboard and just drag a box 
I'm thinking around 47 pixels and then we can just add a little bit of text inside but this text needs to be a darker color I guess so maybe maybe something like this and then sign up with email and we can drag this around here like so okay uh, this is looking cool one thing that I would want to do is definitely remove the uh, border so I'll remove that maybe that needs to go a little bit gray to be completely honest with you Maybe like that. Let me remove this grid and I'm going to find a bunch, a few more icons. So I found a few more icons for social media. I'm going to copy them and paste them, but you can use the same plugin to find the icons and just, just paste them around here. And then last but not least, I'm going to copy a little bit more text and do the copyright, which is copyright 2021, Zoo 365, created by Raddy, and then align this in the middle this is looking pretty cool i'm gonna double click on the canvas and then just make it a little bit smaller at this point it's probably like best to like uh, have a look at things at the things that you don't like and start iterating and keep on iterating until you find uh, like the sweet spot the one that you the design that you like but yeah the more time you spend on it the usually the better it gets I can tell you already that the top bit could be maybe made a little bit smaller potentially, uh, but let's have a look at it on the preview. So this is the preview. It's looking pretty cool. Okay, we're now finished with the mobile version of this website and the next step would be to create the tablet mode and then the desktop. Now, if we go here to the artboards A on your keyboard, if you press that, on here on the right side, you will see all sorts of different artboards that have a different width and a height. Now, the way I usually go around this is, I usually like to look up uh, some mockups and for example, if there are many mockups for iPhone 12 Pro Max, I would just choose this. But obviously everyone's situation is different, so choose the size that you like. And I haven't actually checked uh, for many tablet mockups, but I'm thinking of going with this one here, iPad Pro. It's kind of like a bigger size, so let's just go for this. I think this would look nice, and here we go. Now let's make this a little bit bigger. I don't know, it's going to be smaller than the mobile one, I would assume. But then let's do Helm iPad Pro. Like so, make sure that you save your file, of course. And let's change this to black, first of all. And let's have a look at the grid. I don't know. I think I'm thinking of changing this grid as well. So let's change it ever so slightly. I think there there was a little bit too much space on the sides. Maybe like maybe like fifty eight. I think that would be okay. And now what I can do is I can start grabbing some of the sections. So for example, the top section of the website and paste it, and I can just drag this in here. So if I position this from the top left corner and then just drag everything in the middle, hopefully most of the things will be uh, will just work for us. But uh, most likely it's but as you can see most likely it won't happen because we have too many uh, layers if this was a text that would probably worked okay anyways it's easy to fix um what we can do is we can move the logo to the side make sure that we alter it a little bit so the hat is outside but if your logo is normal then uh you'll probably just want to position it properly then let's go to the right side and get this menu here again we can just make a little bit of space around it just so this it's easier to press and now let's focus on the text the text i can just center line like so and this was grouped already so i can just move it maybe around here uh, this could be shrunk down like so and slowly uh, like this we can definitely fix it up a little bit we can even make the text a little bit bigger if you wish uh, let's make the button a little bit smaller how big was the 
I wonder how big was the button on this side here. Uh, that was 210 and then 40. Uh, so we could do 210 and then just center align this. Ideally, I would grab, you know what? Uh, I could have grabbed this to potentially and just resize uh, this big here. Let's have, if I grab it, and then if I resize this here by just doing this, you know what? Yeah, that would do. And now we're keeping exactly the same spacing everywhere. Let's just make sure that everything is center aligned. Yeah. All right, I'm going to remove this and keep this one here. And also I'm going to remove the grid so it doesn't get in a way. Potentially we might want to make the text a little bit bigger, but this text should be readable and this button can be moved up a little bit. I like so. So you just have to mess around, I guess and make it the way you like it. And as long as it's readable and usable, should be good to go. Uh, let's have a look. I don't know, it kind of looks uh, empty around. Maybe we could do it uh, with the text a little bit bigger. Um, let's have a look. Oh. Yeah, that is much nicer. So 86 and then 86. Make sure the spacing is nicely done. Um, okay, something like this is already looking a little bit better to me. Again, you have to mess around a little bit more. And then I'm actually happy with this section. But one thing that I would potentially add, I would probably move this a little bit up and then I would potentially add a little scroll button. So we can copy some of this text, paste it in here and just do scroll. I'm going to make this text a little bit smaller, maybe like 14 or even 12. Uh, make this as auto weight and let's scroll. Let's scroll. Let's put this scroll here to the bottom. And then if you go to plugins and then let's look for Chevron. Actually, I already found one here. This might work. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with this one. It's cool. And just like so. I don't know if it's a little bit too big. I don't know. I think this is okay. And again, if I uh, group them, then I can move this, and this is grouped as well. So we'll get in here. Uh, the next section could be uh, this section here, but this time, uh, if you remember when I created uh, those three containers, I actually I left them here. So I'm going to copy them and paste them in here. And what I'm thinking is potentially I might be able to just, oh, I might be able to just shrink them. Yeah, that doesn't seem to be working. Um, I wish there were a repeat grid, but what I can do is if I double click grid, and then we can just align it to the grid like so. So we have, what? Well, let's have a look, uh, four columns, and then we can make it like a little bit smaller. Four columns again, and this one will take the rest of the available space here. So another four columns and we're done just like this, I think. Yeah, pretty happy with this. Uh, this is the thing, once you, once you design one part, like the mobile part, then the rest should be fairly easy to uh, design. As you can see, it's fairly quick. I don't know if I went too big on this now, but yeah. Okay, uh, let's move on to the next section. Should be this one here. Usually it's not that bad when you, uh, when you expand the section, but because I'm using two different texts in here, that's why it breaks a little bit, I think. So I'm going to move this like so. Okay, let's uh, ungroup this for a sec and let's grab everything but the text and I'm going to make this a little bit bigger like so. Now I'm going to use this text exactly the same size probably put it in the middle. Let's have a look at how this looks like. I think that this should be okay. Because we made this text a little bit bigger, we could potentially go with a bigger text in here, I think. So let's do 
34. Okay. That's not bad at all. That's not too bad. Yeah, I'm going to use this. And then for the next section, we can just copy the trading options from here and paste this. Oops, zoomed in a little bit too much. We can paste this in around here. Of course, I'm going to have to make the text a little bit bigger now. So this one was 34 pixels. So let's go for 34. And this one needs to go 34 as well. And the annoying bit is now that I need to figure out how much spacing I need. Uh, one way I can do it is do options, paste this in here, and I know now. Okay, I can measure this super quickly. It doesn't have to be. Uh, okay. It doesn't have to be perfect here uh, because we can always mess around with the design a little bit more. Uh, I think this will work. We have the text bigger. Of course, I could have uh, created some more characters here for my medium for tablet and desktop. That would have been helpful. And then let's do this in the middle. And I could actually spread this around like so. Center line here, and that's looking good. The next bit would be, what is it? The boxes in here. Um, I could potentially copy those boxes, paste them and see what a grid will help me. The grid, sorry, the repeat grid. First of all, I need to double click on this artboard. And let's have a look. No. I swear, usually grid uh, helps with that kind of stuff. Oh, it's the hover. Uh, state. Okay, I don't want that. Usually the grid uh, can help you with this, but I wonder what it is because I was messing with the states and now it doesn't want to go to the right. Uh, maybe. Oh, here we go. Sorry, I needed, I needed to double click and now this should help me out with everything here. Uh, I just need to make sure that this is four columns. So one, two, three, four. And this needs to be the same. Let's fix the titles now. The text. The text uh, seems to be struggling now. Maybe we can move this to the top. Could even make the text smaller. Let's have a look. Potentially we could do this as well. I think I'm just rushing the process now, but here we go. Uh, this seems to be looking okay. We could have potentially made this as a slider, just like uh, the thing that we've done here, but uh, I think this would look nice as well. And then we can move this. Oops, sorry. If we double click on this, uh, we can shrink everything down to, is it 16? Yeah, I think it's 16. And we'll see now. Boom. That's looking, that's perfect. If we remove the grid, then as you can see, this is looking nice. Okay, this is looking okay. So the next step is getting shape in here. So I'm going to copy the whole section, paste it. Whoops. Make sure that we grab the image below, the image is below, sorry. Oops, I think I forgot to grab the other image. So I need to resize this as well. Let's go back. That could be in the middle. And we need to make the font size to 34. Let's have a look. Actually, I'm going to ungroup this and change. Okay, size 34. Of course, we can make it a little bit bigger and change this to 34 as well. 
ideally I'll get some text, paste in here, write all the text, make sure that the line height is the way I want it. And then I'll put everything on top just so everything is aligned properly and professionally. But to save a little bit of time, I think I'm going to wing it now and maybe like just finalize it later on. I just wanted to show you the process. You've seen the hard bit uh, on the mobile version anyway. Uh, so just make sure that everything is center aligned, center aligned and center aligned. Okay, I think this is all looking good. Um, we can definitely group this and center line it in the middle. And for the next uh, for the next step, we just have the footer, which is this bit here. So I can quickly grab this, paste it around here. And for mobile, we could potentially separate in uh, separate this into two. So let's do grid, and maybe I can oh, ungroup this. Maybe I can grab this. Let me think about this. You know what? We could separate this into two, um, and then just like make sure that uh, this is full width, and maybe that just takes the four uh, columns here. Maybe we can, you know what? Maybe we can give it a little more space as well, as there is plenty of space available. And this bit here can just be center aligned. Where's the center? Okay. Uh, and we could do this. I think that will work. So you tap on tablet that expands. Um, yeah, I think that would do. So if we shrink this down, this was how easy it was to do the tablet mode. And for the desktop, I wonder if I'm missing something because that was too quickly. And for the desktop, we can do exactly the same thing. Let me remove this. Uh, I can actually preview it super quickly. So this will be the tablet. Oh, look at this. I think it's because uh, I had the hover. So it's a little bit broken, but uh, easy way to fix this might be to just uh, ungroup everything and or remove the remove the hover state and so on hopefully that would, should solve the problem yeah okay that's all good let's very quickly have a look at how we can do the desktop and the process will be exactly the same so let's create a new artboard this time we're going to look at maybe 920 by 1080 which is a desktop and now we can Go down with this a little bit more, like so. Make this background black. Make this as a home, like so. And we can start from beginning, create a grid. Actually, I don't mind this grid. This is the original grid. So we have 12 columns, uh, 16 we get a column width is one, two, two and the left and right margins are 140 pixels. So let's grab everything from this section here, paste it and see what we get. Uh, potentially, I'm thinking let's resize this first of all, like this way and then down. I want to make this full width. So let's go from the left to the right. And if the image is cutting off a little bit, we can go in. Actually, we need to move the overlay first of all, and then we can go in and just position the image the way we like. I think this is looking good. Make sure that we position this image back to the top. Sorry, shape. And now we can start positioning the rest. So this could be here in the middle, scroll. This could be here in the middle, but I'm thinking of making this text even bigger now that we're on desktop because we have so much space. Mobile menu, actually, we probably won't want to have mobile menu at this point. Um, so I'm going to do is create a little bit of text. So let's do text and then let's just add a bit of a menu here. So the menu will be uh, home. Let me just quickly change the text style to character style body. And let's lay out some of the buttons. So we have home about 
we have shop copy paste we have gallery and we have contact so if we grab every single element from here we can actually group everything control and g and then we can use this stack option so if i click on this stack option you will see that we can then start changing the space in between them so let's say 20 uh, we can just start changing this until we like it and it's just so much easier and if you're doing some stuff on the tablet as well uh, you can just do vertical stacking and it will do that for you as well fairly useful trick to know uh, so i'm going to leave this here obviously i want to grab this open the menu here and paste it inside so it's kind of like they group together and i want to make sure that these two the logo and the menu are aligned centered like so i think this will do the job i wonder whether to move this uh, a little bit to the left like so just so we have a full button when this is actually coded um, the next step would be to make this text a little bit bigger let me remove the grid it's so annoying so this text i want to make a little bit bigger maybe like 98 98 yeah something like this bold and big okay i'm liking this um let's make sure that everything is let's ungroup it quickly it's annoying uh ungroup this as well and then we can center line all these things together could potentially make the uh, button bigger as well i think it feels a little bit out of place now uh, maybe like that and maybe maybe even the text can go a little bit bigger let's center line everything again group this and let's make sure that everything is center lined like so all right, this is a quick uh, win here. So let's go to the next section. The next section should be fairly easy to do. So let's place it here. And let's see if I can resize it. I probably won't be able to now. No. Okay, not a big deal. Uh, what I'm gonna do is let's grab the first one. Uh, so one, two, three, four. Is this how many we have? And then one, two, three, four. Yeah. Okay. So I can do this. Not a biggie. Adobe XD makes all this very easy to do. So I'm not even mad. And here we go. I might make this text a little bit bigger now as well. So I don't know what to go for. Maybe like 40. Uh, of course, center line now. That needs to go 40. This is why grid could have been so helpful. And that could be 40 as well. That's it. This section is done. Uh, the next section, we can do exactly the same. So let me actually copy everything and see whether we can work this out. Sorry, this is going to be 40. So I'm gonna, I'm thinking of doing this 40 as well. So let's do 40 pixels and this can be, where is it? 40 pixels. Make sure that uh, the text is nicely aligned. So I'm gonna do O, get this on top of it, measure it. It's annoying that the text is split up, but it is what it is. That's how I wanted it. I paid the price. Um, so let's remove the O. Cool. Group this. Center line is somewhere around here in the middle. Spend your time, by the way, on the spacings and stuff like that. It does make a huge difference. For some reason, this is not center lining, so let's have a look. Okay, this is much better. Uh, we can move this around here. 
and I'm gonna make this around 18 pixels. Maybe we can make it slightly bigger, like so. Let's remove this. Now those boxes, are, oh, these are the repeater boxes, the repeat grid boxes. So potentially uh, I can, first of all, let's make some space. I can make this as four. I don't know what I've done. Uh, first of all, I can I can move this a little bit. Okay, let's move this a little bit. Make this as four. And how big are these? Five, five, nine. So maybe I can make this one be five, five, nine. Nope. This image five, five, nine. Of course, we're gonna have to move the grid a little bit like that. Expand it. Sorry. Uh, perfect. So that can be now positioned correctly. Uh, we can now fix the spacing between every single element in here to 16 and expand and we should be good to go. Okay, this is all good. Of course, we're going to have to sort out the text. That can be 40 and that can be in the middle. No problem here. And that can be I don't know, 18 or 16. I'd say ideally 18. Let's have a look. I like this. Let's center it. This. And happy days. This is all look this is all looking good so far. Maybe the space between those two can be fixed. Here we go. What else do we have? So we have the training options and then we have this section here. Hopefully this is gonna be an easy one as well. So let's paste it in here. I'm gonna make this one a little bit bigger than it is. So let's do something like this. Okay, I like this. A little bit bolder, a little bit bigger. And then, okay, let's, let's first of all ungroup all this. And what I'm gonna do is, let's change the text to 40 pixels first of all. 40 pixels. Like so. Okay. And then maybe I can just copy the button from the top here because I changed it earlier. Is this even centered? Hmm. Just didn't look centered. Okay. And then I can paste the button here and just do what is it? Sign up. And I should be good with this. I don't know if the uh, spacing between the font is equal. As I mentioned earlier, that is important and I could have spent a little bit of time making some sort of a template in this. As you can see, it's not. And it throws it off a little bit, uh, but yeah, that's it. So if I group those two together, I can now select everything, center line, and we're good to go. I think that these sections deserve bigger titles, especially this one can de definitely do it a bit bigger title or I could shrink it down a little bit, I guess. Mm, I'll, I'll definitely go for a bigger title on this one uh, because let's have a look. 67 maybe. And then we expand it. 67 and then we expand it yeah that looks a little bit more powerful to me and then I move the button oh, I saw now when uh, everything is grouped and grouped and grouped uh, but yeah center line make sure that the spacing between them is equal remove and that's it let's 
group everything now, center, center line A, like so. All right, this is a little bit better. I think, I wonder whether this is now overpowering this title here. Potentially, I would change this title as well, but this one looks so good with all this white space around it. It does look good. And I can just leave it like this. We'll see. Let's expand the desktop version a little bit more. And then let's do the footer. So for the footer, we should be, uh, should be an easy one. So let's do, let's show the grid. And then we can maybe have a column here. We can have a, I'm going to have to split this now. I'm thinking that we can have another column. So one, two, three, four, and we can have another column here. This one will be get assistance and I can just paste a little bit of text. We don't have to expand anymore. We have all the, the available space. And then we can have a company. Is this going to be enough? So one, two, three, four. Let's start from there. Okay, now. I'm thinking in this case, I want to fit everything inside here. So I'm thinking let's use three columns. This uses one, two, three columns like so. So this would be company. And then we can, we can remove this and put in here, copy, paste, and then that would be keep in touch. Like, so we can remove all this now. Uh, this could be center aligned. And I have prepared a few links that we can use. So I'm going to copy and paste them here. And we can have a little bit more space now. Okay, that's not too bad. I have a few more links. Here we go. We have about us, jobs. I can't align it. Come on. Here we go. We didn't want to snap. But that's it. Uh, we have the email here, which is okay. That could potentially take a full width. Uh, do we need a button somewhere? Potentially. Um, and then we have the, we can have the social icons in here. And maybe we can even have the, the copyright here on the left. Or maybe we can just keep it in the middle. That's looking good. And let me just center line everything and the last thing that i was thinking of trying is maybe grabbing the logo from the top here so let's grab this and make the footer let's have a look first of all to make it a little bit bigger than it is uh, delete this make the logo a very opaque i think and let's have a look where i can make it look cool I don't know. It's just experimenting, I guess. Um, it might not look as good as I think. I'm not so sure about the logo because of the outline. Maybe, maybe I can just do it here in the middle. But it was just an idea anyway. So I could potentially do it like so. And then we need to make the eyeboard a little bit smaller. Let's have a look at this. It's probably not going to be nice. No, I don't know about the logo. That would look a little bit better, I think. It's just an idea anyway. Yeah, not so sure about the logo. Maybe remove it. And that's it. So let's save this. And of course, I could have spent a little bit more time on the tablet mode and the desktop. But that is not too bad considering how fast we've done it, uh, starting from the mobile to tablet and then the desktop. As you can see, everything is quite nice. Uh, sometimes you do see those lines in here. Uh, what you can do is just open this full screen, I think. That, oh, it didn't fix it today. Or you can just drag the overlay a little bit down and that will fix the line for you. 
So that's pretty much, uh, yeah, so that's going to be everything from this Shitaro. Uh, maybe this would needs to be fixed a little bit. I think there is a little bit too much space between the lines, but I'll fix this in a sec. And I'm going to just wrap it up here. If you found this tutorial useful, please consider subscribing to my channel. Consider liking this video. And if you have any suggestions or comments, please comment below. I reply to pretty much every single comment there out there. And I will see you in the next video. Thank you very much for watching. As always, my name is Raddy and you're watching my channel, Raddy the Brand. Adios, amigos.